Mohammed Noor. We are from uh, Our Vision Studio. We have two uh, very special guests on today's episode. We're going to talk about Burma and internal politics and the Southeast Asian uh, interference of it. To, to talk about it, uh, I would like to introduce our guest. Our first guest is uh, Dr. Ruhaida. Uh, she is uh, a professor, uh, associate professor in University of Bangsan, Malaysia. And um, uh, she has done a research on ASEAN uh, dilemma and the plight of Rohingya. Our second guest, Dr. Uh, Muhibul Haq, is a uh, have done a PhD specializing on Rohingya, uh, PhD on human rights and uh, peace studies. And he is uh, ongoing research, right? Ongoing research on uh, political transition under NLD regime and uh, status of Rohingya. Thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us here. Uh, before we talk, I would like to just say a few things here. When we talk about Rohingya, when we talk about Rohingya plight, uh, we are not talking about some people. We are now talking about me because I'm being Rohingya. This is more than a plight for me myself. I'm a Rohingya. So this is uh, uh, just not a case. When people, uh, Rohingya people die, it is not Rohingya, it is my, 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 uh, my ancestors, my father, my mother, my sisters been raped, all those happening to us directly. Burma now, uh, it's now Burma continuously lying and saying or giving false information to uh, the international community and the Burmese community itself saying that uh, uh, Rohingyas are illegal immigrants, they do not exist here. But it's proven that they are not, they have been uh, an indigenous race of that Arakan. And uh, to stop this, there are many conferences has been conducted, there are many research papers been presented, but it's still Burma continuously lying that uh, Rohingya is not an indigenous and they are illegal immigrant. So I would like to uh, give you now to you to shed light onto, uh, on, uh, on this issue. Okay, uh, it's a little bit historical issues. Uh, uh, firstly, I have to say that through their propaganda, they try to establish the Rohingya word is like a taboo in Myanmar political history, it's ongoing political history. But if you go back to the political history two, three hundred years before, not under the British regime, before British regime, Arakan was independent kingdom. Arakan was never part of present. Burma nation state. Historically, geographically, it has close relation with today's Bengal, Bangladesh. So for that reason, from Burma's side, there has no legitimacy to claim their relation with Arakan, where Rohingyas are son of soil. It is their ancestors' land. Secondly, if we look the Myanmar political history from 1936, when the election process was started in 1936, the British colonial time, the Rohingya legislator Guni Makan was the first who was elected in the uh, legislation process. After 1947, when the country was independent, after 1951, 50, um, 57 election, 56 election, even during the BSPP regime, Mayon regime, who is the main initiator to exclude the Rohingya in Myanmar politics. Their regime also recognized and Rohingya's presence was there. It is our historical documents and I tried to prove it through the documents, not from the Rohingya side, also from the Myanmar mainstream political sides. In Myanmar, government documents also mention their name. Even until 19, 2015, there are three Rohingya MPs presence in the parliament. So how you deny or ignore the Rohingya's presence? It is just sort of chauvinism. I am not saying the Buddhist chauvinism, but the Buddhist is not religion, it's not like that, but they try to establish Buddhist chauvinism and Burmanism, Burman Buddhism. This is the now mixing together and they are trying to establish Muslims are not people or Rohingyas are not people of Burma. Why the Rohingyas important? Rohingyas important because there are other Muslims are living in Myanmar. They are small pocket, but Rohingyas are the only one 
majority Muslims, those are living in some areas, they are majority. They have political significance in Myanmar politics. They were in parliament, Rohingyas were in cabinet in Myanmar or what is the or what was the Burma. So they are struggling for their civilian political rights, not economic, social and cultural rights. Other Muslims, they are living in Myanmar, but they have no political significance due to their number. So this is the totally, we have to sharply divide the two things. Why Rohingyas are fighting to establish their citizens right? Because they have political significance in Myanmar politics. And they have all the elections, the Rohingya representative is there. Just from last election, after 2012 communal riot, situation has been changed. The whole Myanmar state machineries are using Islamophobia against the Muslims and Rohingyas. So now, as a result, no more political party didn't nominate any Rohingya, uh, any Muslims in the last parliament elections. But I had a lot of discussions with NLD leaders. Why? Because historically, Muslims are very close with the mainstream politics, Aung San, and then they have also sort of weakness with NLD. And they have a lot of optimism that NLD will take over the power than ours. Long-standing crisis will be resolved or might be to some extent it will be resolved. When I talked with them, they told them, yes, our leader Aung San Suu Kyi is still very optimistic uh, to resolve this crisis. How? What is the indicator? There is no indication that because you didn't nominate any Muslims. Uh, you know, uh, the Muslim representative of the Kafi Annan Commission, Mr. Ailin, I met with him in the last 16 or 17 October in his house in Yangon. He told me that Rohingya, if Suchi openly take position in favor of Rohingya or Muslims, it will not be helpful for them in long term. So why? We are trying to help through the commission. The commission will prepared some report, then it will be easier for us to access through the parliament. But by this time, after 9th October, the situation has been getting worse. Now it is time for the genocide. So I am not sure Kafi Annan Commission is now how they work in here or yes. not, but situation is totally different. Yes, yes, yes. We are also uh, getting into it now. So uh, when, when you mentioned the, the word genocide, so I would like to uh, come to our Dr. Ruhaida here. Uh, on especially Burma and uh, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, who has been continuously telling that it's not genocide, but it's already proven. There are many research papers. There are many Nobel laureate has already proven that it's a genocide. Rohingya is at the verse of the age of the genocide. They are continuously denying that. So, uh, if we say it is a genocide, don't you think the Burmese government and the Aung San Suu Kyi is complicit or committing? this uh, uh, crime continuously by knowingly so is there any other way other than ICC because ICC have limitation and jurisdiction and all this is there any other way to persecute them in terms of like war tribunal or crime there in terms of uh, law what are the ways to uh, to persecute or to to bring these criminals into justice okay thank you uh, before I move on to look at other form to bring this perpetrator to justice, probably I may uh, speak a little bit about the genocide. Um, as what you have said, actually many scholars, not only the institution, okay, has concluded that uh, there is a serious threat of genocide, ethnic cleansing, and also crimes against humanities. Committed by who? By police, army, security forces, mom and laymen, yeah? especially in the series of attack in year 2012. Wow. And they proceed further by asking international community to interfere and to address this issue. Now you were saying that the Myanmar government, as we are aware, yeah? that they keep on denying this. Yeah? How they deny it? They deny it through their media. Yeah? But this is not sufficient yeah? because um, there's a lot of evidence okay, that collected by institution, Amnesty report, uh, by Human Rights Watch, that uh, proof that, that, genocide. That, that genocide and ethnic cleansings and uh, war mm. against crimes are real. Yes. Yeah? So when I say real, meaning that the element of individual uh, atrocities yeah, um, stipulated by international law were present. 
All right. So, um, yeah, of course they will deny, isn't it? But yes. whether we as uh, intellectual, we want to accept that or not, that will be another issue. Which yes. one will we accept? The one that uh, mere denial by the government through mm. their media, their own media, and um, uh, investigation done by independent institution mm. and observation by uh, academic and scholars. We are talking about professors that uh, arrive at the finding. Yes. Uh, as we said, okay, a complaint has been lodged by, I think, um, a group uh, based in Australia <coughs> to the ICC. So, with regard to ICC, we have to wait, uh, wait uh, for ICC to, to do their job under the Rome Statute. So now move on, okay, other than ICC, what else can be done? Okay, I can uh, name two, okay, yes. here. One is um, to bring Myanmar and the perpetrator to justice. Okay, we have to invoke R2P principle. Okay, yeah. principle of, um, principle to protect, yeah. R2P has three pillars. Okay, pillar number one provides that each individual state in this nation, yeah, including Myanmar in our context, has primary responsibility to protect its citizen from the atrocities because R2P only cover four atrocities, okay, genocide, ethnic cleansing, war against crimes, and um, war crimes and war against humanities. So, four atrocities, yeah? But the government the, unfortunately committing this same crime. All, all yes. okay. So, how can you expect the government to, yeah. uh, to so when, protect this? And, and if the government decided to protect, but lack of resources, then international community or other state can assist. Okay. But if Myanmar feel unable or okay. unwilling to protect, then international community will step in okay to step in the shoes of the Myanmar and adopt uh, either appropriate approach like a more um, peace uh, approach by way of diplomatic or other peace uh, form or um, by uh, doing aggressive approach okay. in which they will invoke um, uh, uh, chapter uh, 7 of uh, United Nations Charter uh, procedures in terms of uh, intervention. Yeah. Uh, just to uh, quickly jump in into one thing that you have mentioned. Yeah. When uh, government uh, is not protecting their own people, then only people from outside or international yes. community uh, can intervene. Yes. But isn't that already proven that the government is not taking responsibility mm -hmm. and on top of it they are lying on top of it, they are ignoring the genocide. Okay. So now I think that the time has passed already that, you know, talking about it like even international intervention, mm -hmm. I think the time has already like uh, clock is ticking. Yes. They must immediately go in. Uh, uh, there is no other option. Don't you think so? Yes, I agree. Yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. there are two elements of R2P. One is that the atrocities has occurred or not only occur, but there's a threat that it will occur. So okay. that is done. That that is met. Yeah. The yes. other one is Myanmar has manifestly failed and unwilling to protect its uh, population. So yes. that's it. R2P should be invoked. Should but be. the question now, why is it not being invoked? Okay. Yeah. So uh, to to that question, we can we can have this uh, uh, second round of uh, questions mm -hmm. in in a manner like uh, now. Don't you think that the uh, international community is raising enough or not enough voice from international community and especially the Ummah, uh, the Muslim uh, 56 or 57 nation of OIC and all those, they are all now voicing out. Uh, isn't that enough now to bring down like international force, like UN force or isn't that the time now? That's my question. Yes, it is time now, yes. or else they won't be filing uh, complaints to ICC. But even international uh, community or any mechanism under the international law, yes. it has its own uh, procedures, you okay. know. So it has to go through the procedures, okay, um, uh, established under Rome sta yeah. Statute. Okay, for example, the complaint that lodged, that being lodged, uh, by the uh, group from Australia. So it will be considered by the investigation team at the ICC. 
if they find there is sufficient evidence to prosecute, then they will send to the prosecution at the ICC. So I, I think the yes. the action is already um, uh, moving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what? That's why I said in the but, beginning. But I think that uh, uh, teacher, I would like to slightly differ with you. The mm -hmm. process is starting as a uh, alhamdulillah is fine, but. Mm -hmm. When the people are now dying, mm -hmm. if I have report, uh, if I am not wrong, mm -hmm. uh, there are five hundred people from nine to two days uh, killed. Uh, last year, two years, yeah. mm -hmm. last two months, two months killed, just killed. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. and we don't know the number of involuntary disappearance. Mm -hmm. Yes, disappearance, we, arrest. Uh, okay, uh, uh, rape. Yeah, rape, rape, and second, rape, uh, rape is very, uh, very important uh, yes. factor at this moment. At this moment, weapon of war. Yeah. Then you Earlier, know. in two thousand twelve, five. And this riot, uh, these atrocities, riot and atrocities, I would like to differ. It's not the same character. The character is different. Okay. But Rohingyas are target from the state side. States are sometimes uh, pick up some non-state element, non-state actors also. So when these people are dying and the numbers is now coming through the satellite sources and other sources, why in this moment? Two major uh, international forums I would like to accuse okay. for my our perspectives. Okay. One is ASEAN. In the name of non-interference, okay. somehow they are silent. On the other side, if they are silent, it is their regional limitations. Okay, I am going to the UN. Why still now UN don't call any emergency meetings under the Security Council? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Security Council, this is the only one way at this moment to stop the atrocity against the Rohingyas, send the UN peacekeeping force. Otherwise, there is no way yes. to save the people. Mm -hmm. We can proceed many things. Definitely, they should punish under the ICC or any international or hybrid mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But before mechanism, now it is our first and foremost duty to protect these people, yes. protect our women. Or women to 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 to, 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 rap, to stop, stop the rape and Obama other. is actually using this procedure mm -hmm. as buying time. They are buying time to continue the genocide. So yeah. mm -hmm. there's some immediate action, I think. Sure. Uh, so the UN peacekeeping force, there is no way to save your people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mentioning yeah. about yeah. the 9, 9, 9 October, uh, I just quickly come here. On the, since nine October until today, according mm -hmm. to the report, mm -hmm. there are like more than five hundred people mm -hmm. uh, already killed, mm -hmm. tortured. Uh, stabbed mm -hmm. and then burned and ma in many many forms mm -hmm. and then many arrest this arrest might lead to death or might lead to disappearance mm -hmm. and then there are mass rape rape not only uh, uh, normal uh, women uh, under age 13 12 14 teenage uh, mm -hmm. girls has been raped so all this now uh, uh, we as our vision we have uh, uh, people on the ground so we are getting all this information and then we are supplying so in many many cases uh, Burmese government also try to hack our website and our many other things to stop all this but my question here is that <clears throat> Burma is still continuously denying same like before continuously denying that there is no such thing happening in this scale sure. recently when there is a demonstration in Malaysia and all over the world especially mm -hmm. ASEAN Thailand and all this they keep saying that uh, it's all lie mm -hmm. it's all lie so if it is a lie why they are not allowing humanitarian access why they are not allowing media access mm -hmm. so at least do people know that really is this a lie mm -hmm. so if we cannot stop genocide if we cannot stop uh, killing people can't international community has the power or the guts to just send the media access at least? Mm -hmm. So I would like to throw on both of you how to overcome this issue that why they are not even allowing uh, media okay. access and how can we actually penetrate this barrier at least to, to open up before the investigation, before the UN uh, force, before all those things. Okay. Uh, before media access, I would like to uh, continue. Okay, uh, regarding the R two P. Okay. Yes. Uh, fine. Okay. Um, you know, um, international uh, law has provided a mechanism under ICC. Yeah, and we also have R two P. And as I mentioned earlier, there's three pillars. All has been uh, met. Yeah. Okay. And then we already reached uh, pillar number three. And the two evidence 
already met, okay? Yeah. It occur or likely to occur and we are fail, okay? But in terms of our response under R2P, okay, there's only two, two types of response. Whether, okay, international community take appropriate approach, okay? Appropriate approach can be taken by neighboring countries or ASEAN as what Dr. Mahmood mentioned. Yes. Yeah? That will be another discussion, I think, why ASEAN is not taking, not any, taking action. any action. Yeah? But the other approach is called stronger approach. And that has to be undertaken okay, by Security Council under Chapter 7. And all the requirement under Chapter 7 has to be fulfilled. I am teaching international human rights law. Okay, I study on the mechanism under international law. Okay, and one of the treaty body that I look at, of course, Security Council. And this international law mechanism is not perfect. They have a lot of issue. Security Council, they are practicing uh, uh, preference. Yeah, they will only uh, 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 take action upon certain certain state. So this is the problem. Yeah. So. Of course, okay. You, did, we need immediate response. Of course, but who? By who? By Malaysia? By ASEAN? Of course, okay. I think that will require further discussion. Yeah, into uh, we, go in, we go into it a little bit. Of course, uh, Dr. Mahbub also have mentioned about the ASEAN and the non-interference right. policy. Yeah. But there is uh, one very important uh, issue here. Non-interference is for those if it is internal matter. Of course, it has already been proven that it's not Burma's inter internal matter anymore because Burma's problem has been outsourced to neighboring countries. Look at Bangladesh, mm -hmm. look at Thailand, look at Malaysia and, and, and the surrounding countries. Uh, many people, many refugees, many displaced people. So it is no more internal, so it's already agreed. But now government, uh, like especially Malaysia and Indonesia, are taking a few steps uh, into this uh, since, uh, especially after 9, uh, 9 October, which is a, a very positive move from the government of Malaysia and especially uh, Indonesia as well. So, but my my uh, question uh, here to both of you is that if Malaysia takes the lead or if Indonesia takes the lead, this problem, don't you think it could be solved to bring this matter into ICC or international, uh, uh, all, all those law that you have mentioned that somebody is not uh, is taking a lead into this so if someone take into lead as a humanitarian or uh, if we look into other perspective as a regional disability because Myanmar has created enough problem not only for Burma or Rohingya if have created problem for the region itself so as a region they have a responsibility as well with regard to ASEAN yeah yes. um, ASEAN hold on the principle of non-interference, okay? okay? There's a lot of uh, historical uh, justification for that. I guess it's yeah. white already. Non-interference yes. is But remember, white. it's yes. not unique, yeah? Non-interference of um, internal uh, affairs of individual state is not only uh, uh, taken place in ASEAN. This is a rooted uh, in international law. It is international law principle. If you look at UN Charter, yes. okay, Article 2 also recognize the non-interference policy. All right? Okay. And also recognize each and individual state, a member state of the General Assembly, uh, has uh, sovereignty uh, and this has to be respected. So, none of the uh, other state can interfere with the internal affairs of the the other state, okay? okay. Unless, okay, mechanism under Chapter Seven of United Nations Charter being invoked. Okay. So this this is not peculiar to ASEAN. So actually, ASEAN is uh, adopting the same principle as international law. So when okay. United Nations can interfere, United Nations via Okay. Uh, Security Council can interfere is when there's a threat to peace and security of the the the, the world, you know. Or uh, it may happen in Myanmar, but now spreading to the neighboring countries, yes. Indonesia, yes. Malaysia, and stuff. Okay, yes. so that is already threat to the peace and security of the region. Of the region. Of the region. Yeah, of course. Yes. So when we talk about ASEAN, now we we come back to ASEAN. Yeah. So. Um, 
So is it time for ASEAN to, re, uh, to, to revisit our non-interference? Um, I think yes, yeah. But I'm not saying that uh, should non-interference pol policy should be scrapped altogether. What I'm trying to say is that it's time for ASEAN member state to apply non-interference policy and balance it with the R2P. Balance. So it has to be balanced, okay? So you cannot bluntly and simply hold to the non-interference policy. Of course, it's now uh, co uh, causing threat to the uh, to Malaysia and uh, other neighboring countries. Okay, so what can be done by ASEAN member state? So far, nothing has been done. And in fact, for the, uh, I think in the uh, uh, ASEAN meeting in Kuala Lumpur, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, the, um, the issue on Rohingya has not been deliberated in the meeting, has not, purposely has not been deliberated in the meeting. Um, and for them to reach consensus, to uh, address this issue, I think it's going to be difficult. Yeah? And furthermore, we do not have the mechanism within ASEAN. And the body that in charge to maintain human rights protection, which is the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission of Human Rights, doesn't have the mandate to bring the perpetrator and to trial, to, to conduct trial, and to uh, to issue a verdict doesn't have. Okay, so, uh, so now, what what can be done now? But I, 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 I see here at least can condemn this issue, even though they didn't condemn the issue. Right. It is very tragic uh, as a regional mechanism of failure in the name of on interference. Okay, in one part, but another part, ASEAN Intergovernmental Human Rights Commission has at least minimum mandate to say what is happening in their region. This is the tragic histories are now going. So, but they are still silent. So, it is, it, it is now the time to think that is this body is necessary for ASEANs or not? Yes, it's a magnitude because when I talk about the ASEAN regional security, it, it involves a lot of things because this region is a, a a lot of Muslims and Buddhists live together. So this problem will not only remain in Arakan, it will not only remain in Burma. It's now slowly now is exporting to other people. There will be hate among Buddhist community. There will be many other that uh, could lead. So I think it is the time uh, to review, as you said, to review the non-interference policy and uh, all these issues be going on like boycotting Burma and then pressurizing them. Yeah. Yeah. All, all, all those, I think, yes. major as it's the time and it has to be done immediately. Coming back to Aung San Suu Kyi, as now, since 9 October until today, she has not even spoken a word about the people in Arakan and it's not about uh, only that. And a recent visit in Singapore, when she also mentioning that there is a, a community in harmony, ethnic community must be in harmony and all those things. So now a lot of people are also talking about her Nobel Peace Prize and all this. So but what we want to uh, indicate here now is that Aung San Suu Kyi uh, is now uh, covering up, covering up the Burmese uh, atrocities, the Burmese military atrocities. So now they are now joining uh, uh, joining with the Burmese government to accelerate this or to even cover up all this uh, uh, thing. Don't you think she is complicit? She is uh, committing this or she is letting it to commit. So international community and uh, plus the ASEAN has to uh, pressurize her. So what could be the way to pressure her? Because she cannot avoid this. It is, it is, uh, it is being done. Many people have been committed committing crime and murder under her supervision. That's what I'm trying to do. That thing, as a Nobel laureate, the peace, she got it to do her contribution on the peace process. You look at the Myanmar politics, what she conducted in last one year, the election was held in the last November. Yes. Now it is another December. I know this. She has a lot of commitment to make peaceful existence inside of the country. So far, she conducted Panonglong 21st century. 
Rohingya was not included. Rohingya was not included. Okay, I can understand they are blaming that Rohingya is not ethnic registered. Okay, but Rohingya politicians, as under the, the run the lead the political party under the election commission. Okay, so it does. It means that Rohingya has still now political presence in Myanmar politics. At the same time, you are saying there is no Rohingya in our country. So a lot of contradiction. A lot of contradiction. You will not find this contradiction any other parts of the world. Any other parts of the which world. Which easily, which very uh, simply prove that they are lying and they are doing oh, okay. Just, just one by one you come. Yes. Okay. They didn't involve any Rohingya in their Panama this process. Yes. Even though two Rohingya leaders were there, their presence in the inaugural session as a political leader, not as an ethnic leader. Okay. Then they form under the whole world was not pressurized to form to address the Rohingya issue. They form Kafi Annan Commission. The Kafi Annan Commission incorporated two Muslims, but these two Muslims unfortunately not from the Rohingya community. So Rohingyas are the main issue, main objectives to under uh, to address the issue, but they, are, they didn't involve any Rohingyas. And on the other side, the ultra Buddhist nationalists also rejected the commi commission and the whole process and then i am th thinking that the whole process how will be uh, proceeded uh, i don't uh, i don't no, think they're so not even recognizing the kofi and they are yeah. have, have set it up a separate uh, commission now uh, yeah, yeah. with their own people yeah which is going to be biased so, so, so this is the thing and then suchi has no control over the government at all uh, all over media that you know if you silence uh, attack their border guard police and but in return why don't you look for those asylums who attack you are you are like a, a killing and raping these women has not attacked you these children that they burn has not attacked them and those uh, 30,000 people since the uh, 2 October uh, since 9 October until today those are the one who not but Burma always look for an excuse to continue the genocide okay right to self-determination questions and ethnic minorities arm struggle is not new in Myanmar politics mm -hmm. from 1950s all ethnic minorities has armed struggle groups and it until okay. today until today and many research already been conducted about the armed struggle they are telling that we are fighting for right to self-determination Rohingyas are also fighting for right to self-identification as Rohingya yes, sir, okay. Okay. Yes. even still Two Arakanis, Rakhine Buddhists have separatist and armed struggle against like the Arakan, Myanmar government. Yes, a lot of Arakan army, Ar Arakan, yeah, yeah. Arakan liberation okay. army. But Kachai Rohingyas are always treated as threat for national integrity. What is the meaning? The others are not threat for national integrity? When, Every they, are, when, when mean, they are conducting war against the Karen, Kachin, Shan, Mon, but they are always all putting of them have an, the, an, the, is our uh, national threat. The Rohingya wanted to march to other countries, neighboring countries, and they are Muslims and try to legitimize their atrocity in the name of global terrorism, which is very, uh, very useless, useless, and not, there is no logic. Baseless, baseless but there, is no, there is no logic because yes. other parts are also affected. Yes. So why you are only accusing the Rohingya? Actually, we have to look after 2012. The Myanmar politics is another entered in another form. Another form is Islamophobia is now widely using and as a tool, tool, as a tool. to unite the whole nation we are Buddhists mm -hmm. though Buddhist religion is not like that. So Buddhist chauvinism is now increasing and Irathu and other some cards are now playing yes. to in the name of nationalism which is really endangered for whole Myanmar. After Rohingya crisis, how you will met other crises? So military thing that in the only force is the only one way to remain their power, and government should yes. always civilian government should always obey them. So this is the things. Yes. And there are many uh, uh, newspaper has been published since uh, last uh, one month that if every ethnic has an armed group, why not Rohingya? And especially the neighboring countries like Bangladesh and uh, the ASEAN, ASEAN countries has definitely a responsibility towards these uh, poor people, poor toward this uh, uh, Rohingya nation. So I would like to say first uh, about the uh, ASEAN. Mm -hmm. So what uh, should they do? Whatever they are doing now, mm -hmm. do you think is enough or should it be done more to save uh, guard these people? 
in terms of ummah in terms of humanity or regional stability okay um i think with regard to this um, what neighboring country should do for the refugee um, okay i i want to establish the law first okay under the international law uh, state will only have legal obligation okay to comply to any treaties okay in our context is the Ref- refugee convention 1951 okay mm-hmm. if state rectify the um, convention, convention yeah so within the asean only two countries that already rectify uh, refugee convention one one of it is Cambodia philippines and, and cambodia, cambodia yeah. and, and south asia only afghanistan M- malaysia has not bangladesh has no, no. not yes. uh, so that Make, make us become the non-state party of the refugee convention mm-hmm. so legally we do not have any Obligate. legal obligation Obligate. legal obligation i'm not talking about moral obligation i'm not talking about social obligation mm-hmm. but there is also a, um, another type of legal, legal obligation, obligation which is customary international legal obligation yeah so uh, under that legal obligation they need not to rectify the particular convention one of the principle is the principle of non refoulement so whereby state the uh, receiving state receiving of the refugee cannot return the refugee back to the country of origin so if they arrive in malaysia malaysia cannot return them back to the country of origin return back to rohingya where they will be again persecuted and kill and, and kill and, and so what, whatever all right So um but then so Malaysia also bound by customary international law but only for that particular principle of non refoulement but nowadays you know like few years back we hear that uh, some countries you know um, receiving countries they instead of sending back the rohingya refugee to rohingya they send to third country because they will not fall within the ambit of the non refoulement so they tend if they arrive uh, from thailand so we will send back to thailand if they arrive by boat so we push them back to the sea so this is uh, the rates criticism against malaysia and indonesia with regard to the boat people from the rohingya and bangladesh okay in terms of a uh, treatment of the refugee currently there is no regional mechanism to um, to process to identify to and to provide issue. protection of the the rohingya at the regional uh, level okay. but each an individual state especially malaysia and indonesia okay we have our individual policy and uh, law and of course uh, we, because we don't sign a refugee convention therefore we treat rohingya and other refugee as illegal immigrant yeah but despite of that i have to say that malaysia has done quite quite good um uh, uh work in terms of uh, giving protection the Asian, uh, yes. yeah and also working closely with unhcr yeah uh being a non state party i think i think credit should be given to malaysian but still there's more to be done yeah by by taking the lead is what we agree just now taking the lead you know uh, yes. to address this this Long issue interest. within yes. the uh, uh, asean intercommission talking about it, yeah talking about it the last time that he spoke about it uh, najib tun razak was in 2012 yeah. yes. he was saying that uh, uh, sanction is not suitable for myanmar in fact is a collective uh, engagement is suitable so so do that then yes. so please do that by all means start the discussion the, uh, by way of diploma diplomatic you know like the one that uh, we did for the uh, mindanao as well as the yes. yala community in the southern thailand and i have to say also that with regard to malaysia our civil society Uh, organization and ngos they have done tremendous effort uh, maybe because majority of us muslim and they are muslim i think that is as one as one as factor as umma, that is the yes. yeah, as an umma yes. we have done a lot this uh, numbers of school that has been established in malaysia you know and uh, and university like my university mm-hmm. institute bangsa malaysia we uh, make sure that the uh, rohingya uh, children will be considered when we going to organize any program yeah for for the children yeah 
so i think what is lacking but they all is uh, more of the um, human humanitarian diplomacy yeah. not humanitarian intervention yeah. not yet yeah. not yet <laughs> yeah so th- this is all short term this yes. is all a uh, piecemeal yes. but what i have to say is that the 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 ideal solution will be a regional mechanism to be established within the uh, ASEAN region so that we can uh, process identify not only the and protect not only the Rohingya but all asylum seekers within the region I think yes uh, I would like to end uh, with our doctor now NGOs in Malaysia and in Indonesia they are looking into this aspect like uh, sending ship or sending some food or some all those things now so now uh, how will that be possible that is one angle second angle is that how to pressure more uh, Burmese government because current pressure clearly shows that it has no effect on them while there is a just to bring a quick note uh, on the demonstration uh, last week when there was a demonstration on Friday uh, uh, 25, uh, 25, uh, 25th November, the same day, in fact, they have escalated atrocities in so high, they have killed so many people just in rebellion that there is a mass demonstration going on in Thailand, in Malaysia, in Indonesia. So, in return, we will kill more. So, each day now, the people who are demonstrating this, they are killing more. So, if you'd like to now uh, uh, send uh, humanitarian aid and all this if they're not allowing all these things now what could be the solution now right the solution is very difficult to say what as a one sentence uh, but uh, we already discussed about the humanitarian intervention is getting yes. force and media access and aid access at the same time how to protect this people's life but i would like to add two th- things with you yes. uh, end of the program the consequences two consequences it is my observations about the Myanmar politics and Rohingya from uh, Rohingya research. Two things can be happen. One thing is Rohingya boat people crisis should start again. Rohingya boat people crisis because inside of the country they are facing atrocity not just just they are facing killing. So they have another opportunity to go Bangladesh. So already there are various information sources that 10,000 Rohingya entered in Bangladesh but government strictly try to be uh, protect their border, not to enter uh, enter any uh, any Rohingyas. Yes. But it is already uh, happening in various ways. So the Rohingyas now will try to come again in Malaysia to save their life because Bangladesh is not allowing them. So uh, they will take. They know we will die in the sea. But when I talked with some survivors, those are the boat. Why about survivors? They told me that. If I am staying inside of the country, they will kill me. So I would like to take one more chance. I know I will die in the sea, but I would like to take one more chance. So better than better than life. kill inside of the country. Second thing is there are another significant things happen. We already discussed in this discussion regional step disability. Yes, it would be the regional disability. How you know in the many Muslim countries there are so many forms of uh, militant forces are existing through the media we know that it is not unlikely so these frustrated groups might be involved in extreme forces it will be really threat for whole regional stability so if we want to really make ensure the peace not only for Rohingya for also for this region you know geographically it is the South and Southeast Asian junction so it has impact rather than current cutting some state problems. I am not undermining their problems. Definitely it was also a problem, but this problem has spread out all over the world, not only South and Southeast Asia, due to their identity and some political phenomena in the existing world. So we should have to protect it now, otherwise. It if they fall into wrong hand, wrong hand. Be, yes, it, yes, it, yes, 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 so yes. Before they fall into wrong hand, their uh, proper measurement should be taken, especially yeah. from the government, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, uh, so that uh, the disaster does not escalate. Yeah, more. Yeah, and then what already, already Professor told in this discussion, Article Thirty Two, 
the principle of non refoulement principle of non refoulement bangladesh can say no we didn't sign it but bangladesh already signed many treaties where the spirit of non refoulement is already exist so i cannot push anybody where his or her life and then they are not and then we are very clearly that if you will go back he or she will be killed i cannot do this thing. it does not mean that i signed refugee convention or not the principle of non refoulement is very significant on the whole human rights mechanism so no one can ignore it so i would like to end with our uh, just a few quick uh, summary that what we have discussed that uh, international intervention especially uh, humanitarian and media access all those things should be done as soon as possible hopefully uh, international community take some serious step and measure into it and uh, before it becomes a regional disability some good hand uh, shake hands with rohingya and save these people from you know uh, furthering uh, into more disaster and i hope that uh, uh, the current uh, especially the asian countries especially malaysia and indonesia uh, they are uh, uh, taking quite a positive step into it so that uh, it keeps the momentum and uh, and uh, comes to a solution all this anyway thank you very much for coming to our our show and uh, this is our last uh, uh, segment thank you very much for coming thank you okay.